I've been wearing this uh, this ring, the Aura Ring, third generation. Are you wearing yours right now? No, actually. Um, Took it off? I forgot about yeah, it. Yeah, I know. Yeah. It's so small and delicate. Sometimes the habit, you like leave it on the side table. But anyway, I wore it to bed last night. and We've been curious about these sleep habit, the sleep tracker aspect of it. Oh, yeah? Yeah, because yeah, yeah. last night after hockey, I had a couple beers and I was like, uh-oh. What's yeah, gonna that's not good. What's going to happen to my sleep track? But it really, I, I, I caught a surprise and it really, show, yeah, it showcases the complexity of sleep. Okay. Because I hit the REMS last night, 20%. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I had, That's very impressive. And I might have four beers, which is supposed to, or at least for some people, uh, negatively impact the REM. Now, I'm not recommending you go drink four beers or whatever. I mean, dude, sleep is about, a lot of it is about habit, setting yeah. a habit and, sure. and uh, make, being consistent with it. But it's really, man, I, I find the bio stuff like, and, and I don't know if this any of this stuff is perfect, but I find yeah. that the uh, tracking your own bodily signals, it's mm -hmm. captivating to me. Like body temperature, recovery, heart rate variability, it's uh it's really yeah. really cool i like the fact that um they give you advice as well just so like you know in how to like an action plan in a way right just not just understanding it but actually how to have like a purpose to nullify it or you know modify improve it yeah you know. yeah galaxy s22 video leak reveals the final designs of all three models Ooh, so that camera unit is new and yeah, this much is the ultra. different. That's like the simplest, least personality type of camera layout I've ever seen. Yeah. I'm not saying it's, it could be cool. Like it's very utilitarian, minimalist maybe. So do you think that it makes the phone thicker? Because it's not bulging out? Yeah. With the uh, S21 it must. Ultra. Yeah, it must. I mean, it had like the hump. Yeah, then, yeah, 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 yeah. We're we're all so used to the bulge, the hump, whatever you want to call it. You go with hump? Camera hump? You go with hump. Yeah. The Not, bulge is a bit... Uh, what about bump? <laughs> camera, perverted. What about bump? Bump? Yeah. What? Camera oh, bump. Yeah, I don't mind Bump, that. hump, you go with those. Yeah. I'll go with bulge. <laughs> oh. <laughs> anyway, yeah. yeah, there isn't one on this new... Okay, play the video. What is it? On leaks? On leaks, yeah. Okay, play the video. Oh, you know what? When I saw it from further out, I like it. When I saw it from further it's out. Very sleek. I like it when I saw it from further out. It was too tight in there. Pull it out, man. <laughs> Get out of there. You're it is uh is it it is quite thick. So this is a but, dummy uh, unit. Can we get one of these? Yeah, we should. If if these All are, three of if them. these dummy units are already out, I would like to handle. I would like to I mean, we're going to, we, when does this device come out? This is cu coming out soon anyway, isn't it? Yeah. Sometime in February. I think that's their. Okay. So we'll have the plan. device soon. Yeah. I'll, I'll throw my SIM in that thing. Look okay. at that. I'll throw my SIM in the ultra. Yeah. Wow. So do you think, is this the start of going backwards and getting rid of the hump? Do you think the hump can go extinct? We'll get, we'll, we won't need to deal with it anymore. We'll just. I hope so. The camera tech is. I really getting, hope so. It doesn't look that fat, the whole phone. Uh, performance of the camera, I'll be curious. Well, are they going to have the same zoom? Does it say? Does it give us any insight into that? Uh, other than its shape and design element, uh, S22 Ultra stands out the most in the rear camera array. Uh, no, it doesn't tell me the focal length or predicted projected focal length. I wonder how they're going to work that zoom in there because it had a pretty pretty nice zoom on the previous generation. But you thought that that contributed to the to the hump somewhat. Mm -hmm. Galaxy S22 Ultra. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see, but I'll go with it. I'll All go right. with it at this point. I don't know. Whatever. Minimalist. Cool. Well, you skipped the Apple one? What happened? Uh, yeah. Why? <laughs> well, this was more of like a, I don't know, like a personal one. Go ahead. Because you're talking about Wi-Fi chips. Oh, my in, God. Uh, don't get me started. Apple products. Yeah. And don't, how don't, it, causes problems don't at least me, in the studio don't get me started but actually get me started okay well um 
this is a Mac Rumors article about how um, Apple is going to make their own, like more of their own chips. Mm. Uh, probably a Wi-Fi modem one mm -hmm. as well. So hopefully well, that says 5G improve. on it. Is it going to impact the Wi-Fi as well? Or, or is it just for cellular? Uh, I guess for both. both. Like just networking. In both general. networking. I need better networking. Yeah, I I've noticed connectivity on the iPhones around here to be subpar when compared to some other devices. Apple in 2020 signed a multi-year deal with Broadcom, which was set to last for three and a half years, which means it'll expire in 2023 under the terms of the deal. Broadcom supplies Apple with range of specified high-performance wireless components and mm -hmm. modules. Apple's growing wireless silicon development team is developing the next generation of wireless silicon. One job listing says, and another, so they're looking for employees to, to build all this out. I mean, now that they're doing, uh, they're doing the processors, it makes sense to get into the wireless mm -hmm. chips as well. Yeah, good stuff. All right, so current rumors suggest Apple's modem chips will be ready for use in the 2023 iPhone model. I hope those things get a little bit more robust because it's been a bit of a nightmare in here lately. Yes. With the uh, wireless performance on iPhones, everybody's, man, people are dying. People are thinking about switching phones in here in this weird tunnel <laughs> that we work in. Yeah. So hopefully they fix it. Huawei P50 pocket foldable leaked in live images. I have seen this. Mm -hmm. And I think it's a pretty nice look to it. I don't know. It's kind of uh, ornate. But the flipping, it's not too many options. You have uh, the approach from Samsung. The Z Flip. Yeah, you got the Z Flip. You have the Motorola Razor. Look at the shot on the left right there. Framing the face with the phone chin. The V chin? Yeah, it's a phone chin right there. <laughs> That's interesting. It's a new trend. I don't know. I kind of like that photo. It's different. Uh, is she making a heart with her hands too? I don't know what's going on. Yeah. Which is what's good about it. And also, what's she looking at in the distance? What do you, what would you imagine? Uh, hamburger. Yeah, I look at hamburger. <laughs> I look at, if it's in the right a hamburger. A nice juicy hamburger. I might look at that if that's the hamburger. Did Burgers Priest open in Newmarket yet? I think so, yeah. Oh, see, now you got, yeah, now, now you got me going. <laughs> um, yeah, it looks like a piece of jewelry almost with what's on the outside. And... You got these two circular cutouts. One is a display. You can see the selfie being taken over there. The other is obviously the camera module. And then there's this groovy kind of metallic looking finish. It kind of looks like uh, foliage. Mm. Very ornate, like you said. Mm -hmm. Fancy. Do they show it unfolded at all or just folded up? Uh, these are just the leaked images. Just the leaked images. So, yeah, P50 nothing in there. pocket. Unlike the phone in the teaser, the images published show a completely gold device with a different patterned finish on the exterior rather than the diamond pattern on the white silver model, I guess, that also uh, leaked. This one has a rippled fan effect. Interesting. Yeah, I don't know what's going to go on with Huawei. Are they going to Are they going to be able to crack back into it? Uh, if they keep making wonderful hardware, it certainly would help. But I just, is it, or do they just stay domestic? Is you just get that in China and that's it? They should, they should uh, they have some do? sort of uh, American campaign here, North American campaign. Because I know there's a lot of people using the flip, right? How's that going to work? Or the well, Z flip. What are they going to do? I mean, they can't sell it. They, they got all those stipulations. Sell it for free. <laughs> yeah, they can't. I mean, they got all those. They Give can't one put, to us. They can't do Android and it's all messed up, man. What are yeah. they going to do? They're, they're, they're cooked. They were even joking about it on Twitter. I saw that. Uh, what what yeah. was that tweet? They're making fun of themselves. They're like, "Really? Yeah, like because you can't, you can't uh, buy the phones anymore." They're like, "We're having a sale on all phones for sale in the U.S. Zero dollars or something because there are none." No. Oh. Yeah, they were making fun of themselves. I don't remember. Well, I know I there's a lot tweet. of people that would like to use a flip phone, yes. like Austin, for example. Yeah, but they need Android on it. They well. need Android, yeah. So, that's true. I don't know how they're going to get it sorted out Huawei at this point, if it's going to happen at all, but that's a fancy looking phone. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey. Online savings simplified. Don't search for coupon codes ever again. It's not a thing that you need to be searching for. Honey can do that for you. I'm all about saving time. I'm certainly about saving money, and you can do it with Honey. Honey is really easy to use. All you do is install it on your browser. 
takes like two seconds and then everything else works in the background. You can see the little example right there. It takes two clicks. You add Honey to Chrome, Safari, Firefox, or Opera. It's completely free. And then you're going to find savings in seconds. It happens while you shop. You fill up your cart at your favorite uh, online stores as you normally would. And then let Honey go to work for you. Figure out your savings. Save instantly. Get your package delivered. And celebrate those savings. If you don't already have Honey, you could be straight up missing out on savings. It's literally free and installs in a few seconds. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a favor and supporting this podcast. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash lulater. That's joinhoney.com slash lulater. We're also sponsored by Exter. Uh, I've been using their wallets now for, well, longer than I've used any wallet in the past. I just keep coming back to it because... They have this slender profile. This one is my favorite. I guess it's called the Parliament. And it's a it's a best of both worlds type of situation. So you get the rigid interior with the soft leather exterior. And you get this little button at the bottom that will actually shoot your cards up. You can pick the correct one. Super low profile still. But if you need to carry some cash or extra stuff, you have this uh, elastic strap in there. And three more if you include the one on the back. Sometimes I'll put a key in there. I've been using this thing for a long time. It's available in a number of colors. Real premium feel to it. But they've got other products as well. Something to suit everybody's taste. This is the hard style, which has this uh, little extra card holder on the outside. So if you want the slimmest thing possible, you can pick. This is called the uh, aluminum card holder. High-tech wallet. High-tech people. Check them out. Exter. You can get 40% off if you use our link shop.exter.com slash Lou. You can also use the code Lou at checkout for the same savings. Thank you to Exter for sponsoring this video. Tesla empo employee killed co-worker in California factory parking lot after earlier argument. Jeez. So that was what it was. Yeah. See, a lot of people, when the story first broke, I saw some of the comments and people were saying, What's the big deal? People get killed in parking lots all the time, and, 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 and it has nothing to do with the company. And yes, true, but this, what was different about this one, it was actual Tesla employees. Mm -hmm. So that was a, a dispute. kind of a key, bit of a key difference there. And, and, and of course, we also know it's a very private environment, the Tesla parking lot. It's not like a Walmart parking lot anybody can pull up. Yeah, it's you need key cards. Credentials, clearance. so everybody that's in there is uh, has to has has to have a the right to be in there i guess approval to be in there yeah anthony well i mean i guess it's good that they that they were able to solve the case so quickly anthony salima 29 is accused of killing a tesla co-worker in the parking lot of the company's california auto plant the unidentified victim was found in the parking lot with a gunshot wound just before 3 30 p.m the fremont fire department responded and provided medical aid but he was pronounced dead at the scene Several expended uh, 223 caliber casings. Jeez. Look at this. He just yeah. pulled it out from his car. Crazy. Yeah. Well, I, I don't know what oh. the dispute was over. I presume something serious. Obviously, yeah, they didn't, this is an extreme reaction. The victim didn't take his sandwich or something. No, 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 no. It was uh, probably worse than that. But listen, I mean, it's a big, big factory. A lot of employees... I don't think it really reflects on the company very much. These type of things happen. It's newsworthy because it's Tesla, obviously, and people are curious about everything Tesla. Mm -hmm. um, it was also, it coincided with Elon Musk being named the person of the year. And, uh, but yeah, it's uh, not the ideal scenario. You hope people can get along mm -hmm. where, wherever they work, whether it's at Tesla or here. Yeah, this, for sure. This company right here. <laughs> yeah. NVIDIA is giving away three The Matrix Resurrections custom GeForce RTX PCs. Those look at these, look eh? sick. Uh, you're big Matrix right now. I feel it. I feel you are big Matrix. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I am too, man. I don't know. Matrix, uh, the movie, the number one Matrix, had a profound uh, effect on young Lou, myself. When really? I was a young yeah, I liked it. <laughs> yeah i would say it's uh it really changed the way that i thought about computers and nice simulation and good stuff will 
yeah. agents. It's a great, especially people for people with ties. Especially for a blockbuster film. Yeah. You know what I mean? That they didn't have any of the um, like Marvel type of pull with the Avengers and all that. Mm-hmm. They, it was a new story. You know what I mean? It didn't have the lore. No. And I guess it's many years ago now, so people people are sitting here saying, there's all kinds of lore. What are you talking about? Well, sure. now there is, but... This is one of the rare movies I feel like um, has really good concept mm-hmm. and even better execution. Willie do. Just with the movie. Willie do. So... Willie do. Really good concept. <laughs> even better execution. Anyway, Equals good movie. Uh, yeah, no, hey, man, I'm yeah. with you. Uh, <laughs> the Matrix Resurrection is coming soon to theaters all around the globe. And to celebrate the imminent release of the hotly anticipated fourth Matrix movie, NVIDIA partnered with Warner Brothers Pictures to produce and give away three officially licensed Matrix themed PCs. Ah, our friends over at Digital Storm partnered up to make it happen so I can vouch for. Uh, the hardware, that's for certain, and the craftsmanship. This is the Digital Storm Aventum X chassis to get it all started. Uh, some other specs here, RTX 3080 Ti, Ryzen 9 5950X, ROG Maximus Crosshair, uh, what is that Roman numeral? Eight formula, mm. 32 gigs of HyperX Fury, RGB RAM. You got to have RGB RAM. Sure. One terabyte of storage, 1200 watt PSU. And some custom liquid cooling in there as well. So th- actually, each one of these is completely unique spec. Yeah. Unique layout. This one was made by NZXT. Oh, each one with a different partner? I believe so. Way to go, Warner Bros. Yeah. Way to go, Warner Bros. <laughs> Bros. So which one is the best, Will? Which one do you like the best? That one has a 3090. Never mind the hardware that's inside, just the layout. Which one do you like best? Man. Uh, Go back to the top picture where we can see them all. With the TVs? Oh. Yeah, okay, so you have, there's three to choose from, left, middle, or right. These are a variety of sort of retro-looking designs. They look like they're from, obviously, the Matrix. A lot of green. Well, not the Matrix, the real world. Oh, right. <laughs> well, I think, I think we're going to find out in the new one that the real world was the Matrix, too. Sure, yeah. No, I mean, I'm not spoil. I can't spoil something I haven't seen. That's just speculation. Uh, I feel like I would go with this one because I would actually use it. The other ones just seem so outrageous, so intense. This one has a robot on top. That's cool, though. It is very cool. They're all very cool. But I so think I would take the. You're first taking one. the NZXT collab. What about you? No, I'm gonna take that crazy one in the middle there. Oh yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I just want to look at it. I think it would be a good prop to have here in the studio. Yeah. It's, and it runs Halo, <laughs> you know. It's a yeah. PC, so yeah, absolutely. Can I can I run that new uh, Matrix game as well? Yeah, when it comes eventually up, yeah. one day. Yeah, cool. TikTok tests PC game streaming app that could let it take on Twitch. Ooh, TikTok versus Twitch. Mm-hmm. A lot of teas there. Uh, what do you think? Is uh, is Twitch shaking in their boots? Is Twitch is getting hit from multiple sides, I guess. If TikTok goes for it, well, then you also got you know, YouTube gaming is le- like seems legit now. Yeah, <laughs> it seems legit. <laughs> seems legit. <laughs> yeah, there's uh, a lot of creators there. Well, but well they, they always have these like, these announcements, inking deals with high profile streamers and things. Seems good. No. Yeah, and they get paid. A lot of money, I would assume. People are getting paid a mm-hmm. lot of money. You can uh, create the news, create the press release. Willie Do just said it. People get are getting paid a lot of money. Quotes Willie Do. Yeah. TikTok is testing a new piece of desktop streaming software called TikTok Live Studio. It lets users broadcast live footage from games and other desktop applications. The software is currently being tested with a small number of users across some Western markets. TikTok says... But in its official page on TikTok's site, it appears to have been taken down as of publication here on The Verge. So people figured it out. They saw it. They started to write articles, and TikTok was like, take that down real quick. They're like, that's yeah, not we're not done testing. Yet. No. The world's not supposed to know about that yet. Yeah. Damn. So this is the UI. Damn. Quietly launched its own streaming software. It looks kind of like Streamlabs, uh, Streamlabs or OBS. Sure, yeah. They probably took some inspiration mm. from there. It's super basic in its current state, has both landscape and portrait scenes, 
Sources include game capture, mobile capture, video capture, program capture, and some text images. No browser sources or alerts. Well, they probably keep it somewhat simple out the gate. Mm -hmm. That could be big. I don't know. Yeah, why not? Yeah, that could be big. Why not? That could be big. TikTok getting involved. Everybody's coming at Twitch. Twitch still has Bezos. Bezos still drives a Rivian. Bezos still wears a cowboy hat and goes to space every so often. So, I don't know. We're going to let the chips fall where they may. Sure. We'll let it happen. The metaverse has a groping problem. <laughs> oh, why am I laughing at that? That's it's rude, a, Will. Such a weird detour. Anyways. A woman was sexually harassed on Meta's VR social media platform. She's not the first and won't be the last. Uh, okay. The, what are the rules? What are the laws in the metaverse? That's where obviously where we would go looking at something like this. Uh, in video games, uh, well, people kill each other in video games, all right? They do. I don't know if you've much no worse things. I don't know if you well. no I don't know if you've ever noticed that. Now maybe the metaverse is not a video game. Maybe the metaverse is a more like life. That's what Zuckerberg would probably tell you. He's like, it's For where sure, yeah. you it's where you connect with friends and spend your cryptos and live your life because you're you're <sighs> and if people agree that that's what is going to happen in the metaverse, that it is going to be some kind of a uh, thing that mimics life or replaces life or uh, is like life, mm. is a part of life, then you're going to, I guess, have to have some sort of rules around behavior some sort of rules about about how you uh, interact with yeah. other people that are there that have their own. And then, I guess, is that laws? Are we talking about having laws in the metaverse? I think we are, Will. This is what we're talking about. Yeah, we have to govern the metaverse somehow. <laughs> you and I? <laughs> Vigilante, Hopefully not. <laughs> me metaverse vigilantes were running yeah. around, SWAT outfits. Yeah, no, no, that's too much power. Yeah, no, um, but who then uh, is Zuckerberg? So Zuckerberg is god of Horizon Worlds, and 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 all of a sudden, what the guy's got a timeout? Is he suspended? What is the penalty for such things? How can you prove that whatever a movement he was doing in Horizon Worlds was actually groping? It's very complex. Yeah. So the app in question is called Horizon Worlds yeah. or Hi Horizon World. Um, yeah, there was a girl who was in there, um, yeah. just kind of interacting with the world and mm. the person came up and did what they did. Uh, now in the headline said grope, by the way. Yeah. In Meta's defense, they actually have a precaution in place. It's called safe zone. Do you, can you, uh. Do you know what that is? No, no, this is news to me. Go ahead. Okay, so this safe zone, apparently you can uh, enable it and it creates like a bubble around you, like a virtual <laughs> bubble <laughs> you, uh, where no one can come near you right. and you can't, like no one can talk to you. Right. You can't talk to them. It's just kind of like you're literally a safe virtual bubble. You can't get COVID in there either. Yeah, it's completely safe. In the bubble. Yeah, sanitized everything. Right. Uh, so it's a feature the that they have. Yeah, Got and it. I guess that's just their uh, defense. According to at Meta, least right now, on November 26, a beta tester reported something deeply troubling. She had been groped by a stranger on Horizon Worlds on December 1st. Meta revealed that she'd posted her experience in the Horizon Worlds beta testing group on Facebook. Meta's internal review of the incident found that the beta tester should have used a tool called Safe Zone. That's part of a suite of safety features built into Horizon World. Safe Zone is a protective bubble users can activate when feeling threatened. Within it, no one can touch them, talk to them, or interact in any way until they signal that they would like the safe zone lifted. But isn't the whole point to interact? Like if you can't not, not touchy touchy though. So but this seems like you can't interact at all once the bubble is on. Yeah. Once you go, it's bubble. the fact that you can turn it on and off at your will. So, so do you have to? So you physically turn the? Can't you just turn the whole thing off? 
<laughs> you can you can just like <laughs> take off the right. the goggles okay but, uh, all right but so you still you don't want to leave the metaverse but you don't like what's going on in the metaverse so you go bubble in the metaverse yeah uh, it's all very uh, it is very interesting it's like you're in this interactive world but you want to put in like a safe you, you put in a safe bubble not to interact with anybody um Interaction it is, is interaction is risky in general, in the sense that uh, there's manipulation that can take place. People talk about it with youngsters, obviously interacting yeah. with people who want to threaten them in the real world, but might make a point of contact inside of a virtual world. Sure, yeah. So there's bullying, it, yeah. Well, bullying, but also predators, different types of predators. Yeah, predator, yeah. yeah. So you're never gonna be able to completely patrol it and i'm really curious i mean the bubble is an interesting idea uh and i guess you're gonna have to have resources like ways for people to lodge complaints and identity aspects and 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 uh imagine being falsely accused like yeah how yeah. do you prove it's all yeah it's a whole new thing and zuckerberg runs it all so you also kind of have to trust you have to trust an, in, an independent entity. It's not like a government setting these rules. The government is the company that runs Horizon Worlds, which in this case is Facebook. Well, Meta, my apologies, Mark. Yeah. Uh, very complex. And they paint it very exciting. Like you can do whatever yeah, you no want. One's getting the no, one is, no one is getting groped in that, in that clip <laughs> at all. I mean, as far as I can tell. But all joking aside, there, 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 there absolutely is, there could be threat, a threat. Just because it's virtual doesn't mean there can't be a threat or that something can't materialize in real life or that something can't be traumatizing in uh, video game life. For sure, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's all, it's just the method in which, like whether, like how, what kind of tools can really be in place and, and uh, what, what kind of... Uh, uh, punishments i guess or mm -hmm. or um deter deterrent deterrence they can have for the other people who the mm -hmm. guilty culprits and then and then how do you keep them off can they just make another profile another mm -hmm. avatar or um find a way back in yeah the metaverse is um a very complex structure a because you're you're kind of like in a society in and of itself so that needs to be regulated. I know, but they're not they're not calling it a game. It's not like you're booting up Warzone in order to shoot one another, right? Where the mm -hmm. rules are well understood. I, 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 it's yeah, a constant topic of debate on message boards after the article was whether or not what she had experienced was actually groping if her body wasn't physically touched. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, it's very complicated as well. I think people should keep in mind that sexual harassment has never had to be a physical thing. Uh, it can be verbal. And yes, it can be a virtual. Mm -hmm. I, I think the problem, it can be, but the problem would be the definition. Figuring out the definition. Because it obviously is a different experience. The virtual version of it versus having a physical threat in your presence. Because like you said, you still have the off of taking it off. Although maybe people don't feel that way. This is the complexity. Because when you talk about bullying, people do things in their real life because of something that happened on Facebook. Right. That they feel it's so real or so permanent or so threatening that they do something in real life as a consequence. So it is squirrely in that sense. Mm -hmm. But when we have these real world words that uh, obviously are d derived based on... Uh, or attached to experiences in the real world and the threat associated with those experiences, you almost wonder if you kind of need new ones right. to adjust for the virtual equivalent of real world things. Because obviously for this person, there's people who have experienced the same thing in real life and probably, and might be sitting there saying, hey, that's not the same thing. Mm -hmm. That they might exist as well. So you need another word for that because the threat is different. Yeah, and this story um, the, also, the amount of threat, the the intensity of the threat. Although that's up to the individual to a certain extent. It's like being terrified watching a horror movie. Mm -hmm. Maybe everybody isn't, but maybe some people. You hook them up to fMRI, and their brain is lighting up, and their pulse is elevated. Just watching the 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 fiction play out. 
mm-hmm. even though they know it's fake. Yeah. Either way, um, this stuff is starting to become more and more common. Yeah. Uh, there's uh, there's another story in here as well about uh, groping at a in a different app, mm. like a, I think it's called Quiver. How this other person, you know, her husband was watching as well as her brother-in-law was watching this thing happen while she's being groped in the virtual world. So you got to turn turn the thing off if you're bothered. <laughs> turn it off. You know how to turn yeah. it off. Turn it off if you're bothered. If, if you're being actually harassed, I mean, please, people, turn it off. Yeah. If, if, if it's affecting you, if you're emotionally distraught, if, if uh, people, some kind of creepy, turn it off. I mean, mm-hmm. You can't forget that you can turn it off. And I know what you're saying. You're saying, why should I have to turn it off? That that other person should have to turn it off or whatever. But no, if it gets to the point that it's, uh, you can turn things off, at least these things. Yeah. Yeah, you have that choice. So, I mean, look at all this work they did on the app to give you the safe zones and the horizon and everything else. And you're like, don't let one person ruin it. And I'm not saying you could turn it off completely, but like, I mean, we... We can't, we can't lose that ability to, to, to at least temporarily. Mm-hmm. You got to hit the power switch every so often, no? That's what uh, Mark doesn't want you to do. No, Mark definitely Mark definitely wants you to stay yeah. metaverse. Absolutely. By the way, this is not, I'm not sipping whiskey. That's just how good this sure, coffee buddy. is. That's just how, this, <laughs> is, this is tier coffee, man. Yeah, I'm doubt just, out. I'm just, uh, um... Uh, savoring. Okay. That's yeah. the word I wanted. It's not spiked, is it? I'm savoring. Okay. Man. All right. Come on, Will. Okay. Melania Trump launches NFT platform in first public endeavor since the White House. Why'd you have to give me this article after that last one? Good that was a funny. lord. Uh, Try NFT, to light it up a bit. NFT. Light it up or lighten it up? Lighten it up. Yeah, uh, not burn the whole place down. <laughs> thank goodness. <laughs> Melania Trump launches NFT platform. Um, platform? So what is it? A marketplace? What is it? What are we dealing with? Uh, the former first lady announced Thursday she is oh, selling an NFT. Um, Melania's vision. The NFT is the first digital art to be sold on her newly launched platform. Okay. I am proud to announce my new NFT endeavor, which embodies my passion for the arts and will support my ongoing commitment to children through my Be Best initiative. Uh, Through this new technology-based platform, we will provide children computer science skills, including programming and software development, to thrive after after they age out of the foster community. A portion of the proceeds uh, proceeds will assist children aging out of the foster care system by way of economic empowerment. And with expanded access to resources needed to excel in the fields of computer science and technology. That sounds like a press release. It is a press release. Mm-hmm. It sounds exactly like a press release. It's very professional. Yeah. Uh, so the NFT is a watercolor by Marc Antoine Coulon. It includes an audio recording of Trump, according to a press release from her office. Uh, it'll cost approximately $150 and be available to purchase between December 16th and December 31st. Uh, what is it? Is it based? Is it on Ethereum? Uh, we don't. We don't need those technical details. They're not in the CNN article. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, they're trying to be in, uh, new, new age with it. They're trying to be. It's for the kids, so you don't. You don't want to get left behind. And yeah. To say that it's uh, helping kids. It's is always a good blanket statement. It's helping kids, and it's one hundred and fifty bucks. Mm-hmm. And it's got all the right keywords for 2021. It's got it has the three most important letters of 2021. You know what they are? What's that? N, F, and T. Right. Super. I think important. this is the N- NFT. It's her eyes, herself. or is it just so or it's eyes. itself? Is it her eyes or just any eyes? Oh, Melania's vision. It's, it's her eyes. Yeah. It's her, her vision. <laughs> <laughs> it's her eyes uh, in a watercolor by an artist. Yeah. And there's some serious eyelashes going on. Yeah. Um, <laughs> interesting. I mean, it's, it's all right. Interesting. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. There it is. It's kind of like a charity aspect to it. Newly discovered millipede is the first with more than 1,000 legs. You might like this one. 1,000 legs. 
despite their name, none of the leggy anthropods had made it to 1,000 legs before now. Mm -hmm. This one has 1,306. This is a record breaker. It looks like a snake. Yeah. Man, that's a millipede. That was uh, deep in the Australian ground. Australia got all kinds of funky, different types of uh, creatures mm -hmm. that, that you just don't encounter elsewhere. For the first time, scientists have found a millipede that actually has 1,000 legs, more, obviously, plucked from deep in a mine in Western Australia. So you're just you're just putting in your daily work and you happen upon this thing. Yeah. Uh, 3.78 inch frame. Okay, so, so it's, it's really it, tiny. It's tiny. Yeah. We're zoomed in here. It's definitely not snake-like in size, but uh, but it's long because it has to have 1,000 legs on it. Yeah. This thing is like 60 meters underground in the dark. Uh, it's just mind-boggling to consider. There must be an orientation to food and resources and how to find other mates, he said, noting that the sensory structures seem to be very highly developed in this particular species. So it's one of those things where it's like if the species can do particularly well given the in environment and surrounding, it can grow bigger than it typically would. Yes. In that scenario, look at all those little legs at the microscopic level. Yeah, they had to go through um, the microscope uh, to actually count the legs manually. No kidding. And uh, yeah. Im imagine that. Imagine if your environment was just uh, uh, very uh, robust mm. and abundant and all of a sudden you just started getting extra legs. I mean, I would run faster, right? I think it'd be all types of advantages. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. Does this scare you? This, uh... Like if I encountered it? Yeah. What would it be doing if, so, probably not if I'm in a coal mine or, I don't know, probably probably a gold mine or something like that in Australia, some other yeah. natural resource. Then no, I kind of would expect to see something like this if I'm that deep down. Like, okay. Oh, there's going to be something strange over here. Yeah. Uh, but if it was crawling around the studio, I'd be quite surprised. Right. Yeah. This doesn't scare me at all. I but I feel like centipedes scare me. Okay. You know centipedes? Yeah, I know what a centipede is. Uh, they're almost like they I mean they don't look identical, but yeah. they're fairly close. But centipedes are just oh. Really? Oh. Interesting. So centipedes not so much. Give a give us a picture of a centipede. It's like scary centipede or something. I don't know. <laughs> Let's see what uh, we got here. Oh, yeah. Their legs stick out a little oh, further. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, I see. This, including the house centipede? Well, look at oh. the size of the giant one on the right. Go over there where the arm is. Oh. Yeah, okay. So, yeah, I feel you on that. That thing is, that's the size of Otis. Oh, look at millipedes. I wonder what They look a, friendly. I see what you're saying. You know? You're being judgmental. I, I totally am. I wonder what Otis would do with that uh, giant centipede over there on the arm. Oh. You think he would kill it right away? What would he do with it? Or would he be scared? He'd bark at it for a long time. Obviously, crawling around. Oh, yeah. On on the arm there? That's the one I'm saying. I want yeah, to know. Yeah, that's what, freaky. Would he eventually kill it, though? I don't think he would try. He would run away from it. Yeah. Yeah. I oh. think maybe his dog instincts is like, hey, I think he's going to sting me. Yeah, what are they, poisonous? Big, it, it, they it, are, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. All right. Oh, Good to know. So freaky. Florida couple finds 80,000... Nice bees in their home's shower wall amid bathroom renovation, removing the insects and the hundred pounds of honey mm -hmm. found with them took more than five hours and came at the cost of 800, which was not covered by insurance. How many? So their wall is full of honey? Yes. They, uh, so a couple um, actually owned this house and realized that there were like bees making a hive in there and uh they were just like okay we're just gonna let you do you whoa it, and then um it was only when they wanted to renovate their bathroom is when they're like okay we're gonna kick you out the bees <laughs> wow um but you know i'm guessing this would be maybe months to years for this beehive to be how as big as it is. Yeah, it's like the um, entire height of the shower. So it's seven and, foot like long. Right. And uh, 
this TikTok video, I think uh, the B Wrangler. I don't know who you call them, but uh, she took down the the walls and <laughs> the B. I think they're called beekeepers. Beekeepers. Yeah, but I like or, Wrangler you know, better. You get in there and wrangle those bees. Yeah, with the uh, rope. Uh oh. Yeah, I mean, that's it. You got to be careful, right? In that yeah. situation, you that's for a, sure a lot of bee horsepower in there. You got thousands upon thousands of bees. Um, but they kept like the walls warm. Apparently, like when they're huddled together like that, they produce a lot of heat. Um, hopefully, they can um, <laughs> heated heated bee walls and floors in your in the bathroom. In your bathroom, I mean, that wouldn't be too bad. No, I I tend to think there's going to be some downsides. Well, obviously. So were they able to extract the bees and move them? Or did, yeah, or did they have to wipe them out. Hopefully, in this TikTok video, if it plays. Um, she extracted it. She kind of kept it intact. Wow. And yeah, she's just going to keep it. Hopefully she can share the, some honey. And uh, that oh means 100 God. pounds Look of honey. Look at the honeycomb. Honey oh my God. And apparently the noise didn't uh, really bother them as well. Oh, so obviously the bees were getting in and out through a wall on the outside. Yeah. Yeah. Jeez. But apparently this is obviously damaging as well. It could damage the um, drywall. Oh yeah, there's more they're creating and, moisture, uh, right? Like Yeah. There's 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 all kinds of problems that And uh, here. when they're creating honey, I think the ants would notice and would come up there as well. Yeah, yeah, so that would gotta, be a problem. Yeah, you got to get them out of there, will. I don't this is it's not cute yeah. at a certain point you got to get them out of there, will. Yeah. They don't belong in no, you can't have houses. Them. You got to set them up somewhere else or something. Yeah. All right, last one. A man who was kicked off a United Airlines flight for wearing a red thong on his face instead of a face mask <laughs> compared himself to civil rights pioneer Rosa Parks. Oh, boy. Oh, jeez. Now, I hope he didn't go there. Was that his plan all along? Or did... Yeah, he was making a statement. It wasn't a, a last-minute Adam Jenny, 38, was seen in videos wearing a red thong on his face in place of a regular face covering. United Airlines removed him from his flight, citing non-compliance with the federal mask mandate. He told local news outlets that he wore the thong to challenge the federal mask mandate. Everything else that has sparked change in this country has started from everyday people, he said before comparing himself to civil rights pioneer Rosa Parks. Oh, man, yeah. Oh, there's a video of it? <laughs> yeah, there's a video. Man. And this is them asking him to get off? Oh, that's a quick clip. Oh, here we oh, go. Oh, no, no, that's... Uh... Yeah, it, it, it's, it's not specified in the thing. We go by what, what, what's allowed on the airplane. I'll pass it on to the captain. Uh, it seems... He's wearing a red thong. A bright red thong. I'm, asking, I'm here to ask you a question. Did he just get kicked off for wearing a mask? It's between bikes and sticks, sir. You have to put your mask on. Did he just get kicked off? Sir, for I don't wearing know a what's mask. going on, but I'm, I'm asking you. It has to be in between bikes and sticks. That's the federal law, okay? Sip. Now I'm biting. Now, now biting. Put it, no, now put it back on. Now put your mask on. Did he just off. get kicked off for wearing a mask? I don't mask. know. What's I'm out of here. Forget it. I'm out of here. Wow, that's not the follow-up I expected. Yeah. Another. He an, couldn't take it anymore. Another patron. It was another mm -hmm. guy on the flight. He was defending the thong wear. That saw the thong thing happen and saw him get kicked off. And then he, and then he shows up with no mask on. Mm -hmm. he, he sounded like he had a mask, but then he took a sip of his drink and he was arguing the idea that, yeah. Like how? Who cares? Because I'm sipping the drink. My mask is off half the time anyway. Yeah. That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And then he goes, "I'm out of here," and leaves the flight. Mm -hmm. That he paid for. So, so it was some kind of solidarity move with Thong Man. <laughs> wow. I hope that becomes his name. Uh, I, I guess it worked kind of in the sense that people are paying are paying attention to it. They're looking at it now. But is it, it still this divided? 
Well, the, the whole I think mask thing. I mean, I can't tell if it's a joke or if it's for real. There could be other ways to like the thong aspect makes it seem funny. Yeah. If it was a real protest, I, I would think he could have had something else on it. Mm hmm. Uh, like maybe a mask, but then it said something different or maybe no mask at all. Yeah. And saying, I refuse to wear a mask for this reason and that reason. But there seems to be a slight sense of humor with the whole uh, thong element. But maybe it's the thong element that got the news story, which got for people sure, talking yeah. about it. So, oh, yeah, definitely. So the fact that it's bright red. It's, yeah, it's quite a look to it. I, I think a, a, a mask works better than a thong <laughs> in most cases. Yeah, I think so, too. In most cases. <laughs> I think so too. Although that thong looks to have pretty decent coverage. Yeah. The nose and mouth looks to be pretty decently covered. It seems a bit loose though. Is that the problem? Yeah. In the, uh, yeah, the chin area there. Yeah. Because it is funny thing with the face coverings. The variety of face coverings that people use. Is some people got the medical mask. Some people got the N95. And then some people just have like a... a a rag <laughs> and, then, and then and then some people would have a uh like a mesh did you see those people trying the mesh one out they're like nah it's really? a face yeah type it in type type mesh face mask or something yeah like that one on the left on amazon no no that's yeah that one it's that's hilarious too because you can say it's a face covering yeah but it's just mesh, so it's obviously not. What, mm -hmm. is, what is the point of those, by the way, outside of saying that you're wearing a mask? What is the point of those? Uh, I guess it's just like a term. No, do, do, they, do they have some kind of actual functionality? A straight-up mesh? Like that one says 2G... Tactical strike force. Is that protecting you from something? It's a muzzle. I don't know. Oh, airsoft. Oh, that's an airsoft mask. Okay. I got to the bottom. At least that one. The non-fancy non, okay. non -fancy, uh, looking one. Is that Russell Peters? Well. <laughs> <laughs> could be. <laughs> could be. But that mask looks pretty normal. Anyway, I don't know. Yeah, yeah that the, one's normal. Yeah, the mask. This one is not. You have a mask mandate, but what is a mask? What constitutes a mask? What is acceptable? What is not? And mask talk. 2021. 2021. Still going strong for... A few more days. A few more days. Yeah. And then 2022 happens. And it's a whole new world. In Horizon the world. In the metaverse. Yeah. Or the Matrix or something. Yeah. No masks necessary. In fact, you got a whole bubble for yourself. Never mind a mask. <laughs> Safe zone. Never mind a mask. You got to take a whole bubble. Can you wear a thong on your face in the metaverse? Are Absolutely. You, you're allowed to. Yeah. Oh yeah. No problems there. You see? See how that works. <laughs>